We're going to uh, continue our message series that we began last week entitled Anchored. Anchored, and this is the second installment of this message series. You know, when we were singing a while ago, and one of the songs that uh, we were singing was uh, taken uh, lyrically from an old hymn of the church that many of you recognize, although the melody and the tempo a little different, but yet the words ring true. And I believe, I believe it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, that above everything that is said and shared today, that, that Jesus is the anchor that we're talking about. It's Jesus, and Jesus alone is the one that we tether our lives to, that, that we tie on to, that no matter what we're facing or have faced or may face in the future, that it's Jesus and Jesus alone that is our anchor. So I want you to, I want you to be reminded and think about that in the next few moments as we look to Scripture as we share some thoughts regarding this message titled Anchored. And we're going to do a character sketch here. We're going to look at the life of Apostle Paul. And we're going to pick out one event that the Apostle Paul experienced as well as endured. And he uh, was able not only to endure but come out on the other side. And God protected him and shielded him, and kept him through that. And I, I know that many of us today can attest and can identify with the story of the Apostle Paul, what we'll talk about here in just a few moments. So I hope you brought your Bible with you, whatever form, e-form, tree form, uh, whatever form of scripture you have. I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter. We're going to look at this verse of Scripture, of this passage. We have used this as a foundational truth in Scripture for our message series. And I want to go back to it today as I shared with you last week. The writer of Hebrews in the 6th chapter, beginning with verse 18. It says, So God has given both His promise and His oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there for us. He has become an eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Now you may be wondering if you've seen this or read this for the first time or maybe you've read it a few times and it really doesn't it really doesn't at face value make any sense why would he go from there and all of a sudden he he's talking about Jesus going into the inner veil and he's our high priest and the order who in the heck is Melchizedek anyway you know you may be thinking that I'll get to that toward the end of the message today because it fits this passage fits one with the other as it relates to verses 18 and 19 leading us into this verse 20. I really didn't unpack this scripture reference last week, but we're going to spend a little more time on, on this thought as it relates to our message today. I want to pause and, and just pray once more. I want to continue to lift up the nation of the Ukraine. All the things that are taking place, the events are, are really are growing and materializing more each day if you've been keeping up with the news. So I, I want to pray for the people there and the leadership there. Pray for our nation that God give our leaders wisdom relative to our involvement to whatever degree in helping the people of the Ukraine. 
continue to stay free and enjoy the liberties that so many other countries do around the world. So I want to pray for them. I want to pray for you. Uh, help me pray for uh, our church uh, physically. I'll just pause for just a moment and give you a, a quick update. Uh, the progress is moving forward. Not as fast as I would want it to. It's almost like a snail's pace, and I'll give you explanation for that. It's not the delay on materials this time. It's delay on inspectors coming and giving us a thumbs up so we can go to the next phase. So we can't, we can't continue to, to build or continue the process of repair until the, the inspector that's inspecting that particular part of the, of the build or rebuild to inspect it and say, yes, continue. So pray that we have favor with these inspectors and all the things that take place regarding the rebuild. So pray that God would give us favor. Father, I pray blessings upon everyone here. Bless the word that it is applied to our lives. God, may it remind us that you and you alone, you're the anchor for our lives in every facet of life through every chapter through every every day through every encounter that we have good or bad God you're our anchor and may we know God that we can connect with you and be safe and be secured with certainty that you'll get us through bless God the people of Ukraine I pray for strength. I pray for comfort. I pray for peace. God, we have no idea what they're experiencing because we've never experienced just the, the tragedy and the horrific war that they're experiencing. I pray, God, that you'd cover them and keep them, protect them, and give wisdom to the leadership, God. Give wisdom to our leadership. We pray, O oh Father, that you would make a way where there seems to be no way. Bless our time together today as our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look with me in another portion of Scripture. It's found in Acts 27. The Acts of the Apostles, this is actually the events that take place in the lives of God's men and women after Jesus ascends to heaven and the church is born and all these different things are happening in this book of Acts. And the Apostle Paul is a key player. He has a, a main role in uh, this uh, book of the Bible. And in the 27th chapter of Acts, Paul is, is on a ship. And he is headed to Rome. It's, it's the last few years of Paul's life because Paul is getting ready to stand trial in Rome for the crime of of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he's with 200 other men along with many soldiers and those that uh, have him captive. And they're on a ship heading to Rome. And when they are in the seas of transport, a, a, a huge storm arises. Some scholars uh, point to it being a typhoon or a hurricane. We understand about hurricanes around here, right? So in this hurricane-forced wind, Paul and these other men are actually uh, looking for some type of stability and certainty in this uncertain environment that they're in. So in verse 27 of Acts chapter 27, I want to begin reading. About midnight on the 14th night of the storm, as we were being driven across the sea of Adre Adrea, the sailors sensed land was near. So they dropped a weight line and found that the water was 120 feet deep. But a little later, they measured again and found it was only 90 feet deep. At this rate, they were afraid we would soon be driven against the rocks along the shore. So they threw out four anchors from the back of the ship and prayed for daylight. Now let me ask you a rhetorical question. Have you ever been in the storm of life and you felt like there was no moonlight or no sunshine but all was dark and you found yourself praying for daylight? 
Yeah, I've been there before. This storm that the Apostle Paul and these that are on the ship with him, they were encountering something that they had never encountered before, yet they dropped anchor to secure their ship. So for all intents and purposes, for this message, I want you to think of yourself as a ship or a boat. We know a lot about boats. You can go down by your gosh road and you can see 13 boats in somebody's yard. Everybody got boats. You know, you may not have but one vehicle, but you got about 13 boats. So you know about, understand about boats. Everybody understands about boats or ships in this part of the country. It's interesting as it relates to a character sketch that we talked about earlier. It's interesting what Paul has endured before this event in chapter 27 of Acts. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, as he's kind of, he's kind of not bragging or not boasting, he's just trying to help people understand who he is. He's, he's kind of given his bio or his resume verbally. And he says to the people that are the first listeners of this letter, 2 Corinthians, he says, I've been in prison multiple times. He says, I've been stoned one time and left for dead. I've been whipped 39 lashes, which was a customary cultural uh, directive as it relates to how many lashes you give a prisoner. He says, I've been whipped 39 times, 39 lashes, five separate occasions. He says, I've been beaten with rods three times. Man, this guy's been through some stuff, hasn't he? Then he goes on to say that kind of connects with this story that we're talking about. He says, I've been shipwrecked three times. He says, a, a night and a day I've been adrift at sea. So he knows what he's talking about when it comes to storms, when it comes to not so certain circumstances or not so pleasant experiences of life. But he knows what he's talking about. So we see this happening to him in Acts 27. And we wanted to identify ourselves to some degree in this story, but also in the the passage that we read in Hebrews chapter 6, as it relates to even when we're in storm, we have the hope of a steady and trustworthy anchor. And that anchor, again, as I said earlier, is none other than Jesus Christ. If we try to grab another type of anchor, we're going to be lost and undone and we'll still be on the storms of life. But if we hold on dear to the anchor that we find, find in Jesus Christ, before long we will find ourselves at a place of rescue and safe harbor and something that we all long for when we're going through storms. It's, it's not uh, something that is super intelligent to say, but storms happen. You don't have to go looking for them. They find you. <laughs> and it's so true in our lives. Storms do come from time to time in our lives. And I'm talking about more of uh, the, the, the practicalities of life as we live and, and we do life in this, this thing called uh, life and on planet Earth. And those storms, to whatever degree and however they are described, they come in our lives. We don't look for them, we'll invite them, but yet they show up. They find us. The voyage of life is marked by storms. These storms come in the form of physical afflictions. They come in the form of anxieties and depression, hopelessness. They come in the form of losses. In the last seven months, all of us, in one way or the other, we've, we've experienced some losses. They come in the form of family difficulties and even spiritual conflicts, these storms arise that we don't invite, but yet they show up at the most unexpected time and the most unconvenient time. You've heard the statement, boy, when it, when it rains, it pours. But yet we have an anchor 
that's trustworthy. That's the hope of every child of God. That's the hope of every believer that even though these things come in our lives uninvited, we have that hope, that anchor. The Bible says in this book of Acts that when this ship that Paul was on, they were being tossed and they, 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 could, not, they could not navigate through this storm to land because they feared they'd be thrown against the rocks and everyone would perish and the ship would just go down. So they, they set anchors, they dropped anchors because they knew that would hold them steady until the next thing that would occur. What do you do when you're trying to ride out the storms of life and it gets difficult and it gets challenging? Simply you drop anchor. Clara was... Clara was talking to me last night. We were talking about this message. and She said, you don't want to use another word besides drop anchor, like cast anchor or throw anchor? I said, no, drop anchor. <laughs> you drop anchor. That's what, do, that's what you do when, when you're a believer, when you're a Christian, when, when you would want something so much better than you're experiencing. What do you do? You drop anchor and you hold to the anchor of Jesus Christ and trust that he's going to get you safely through that storm because that's where your hope lies. Can you say amen? Nothing better than the anchor of Jesus Christ. I want you to notice that the one who is in the safe harbor, calm water, doesn't need an anchor. And we've all been there. We didn't, we didn't need to drop anchor. Everything's smooth sailing. Everything is just fine. It's like glass. It's just My life is going really good this week or this weekend or this month or this year. My life's going really good. Those folks don't need an anchor. But those that are in the storm and those that are getting tossed and those that are, are getting beat by the waves, those are the ones that need the anchor. They need an anchor in the strong current and in the storm they need an anchor. Peter said this in 1 Peter. Peter said, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials that you're going through as if something strange were happening to you. It's like, hey... You signed up for this, and you would say, I didn't sign up for this. Yes, you did. <laughs> if you know the Word of God, you signed up for this because it, it rains on the just and the unjust, the Bible says. Storms come on the just, and they come on the unjust. The difference is, those that are just or those that are Christians or believers, they have something that they can hold on to, and that is Jesus Christ, the anchor for their lives. That's the hope that we have that others don't have. That's the hope we have in Jesus. Peter said, don't be surprised. It's going to happen from time to time. But Jesus gives us the good news of that. He says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. That's the truth of Jesus Christ. That's a red letter truth in the Gospels. Jesus said this, When the anchor has been dropped into good ground, the heavier the strain, the deeper and firmer its holding strength. Some of you guys that fish, you have different types of anchors. I would think most of you would have the anchors that have, that have the, 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 the points on it so that when you cast it, it grips and holds on to the bottom. Winds and currents increase in volume. The anchor bites more into the sand or for bayous and lakes, more into the mud. It bites and it increases its power. It's the same with a believer facing struggles and challenges. Instead of driving you away from Jesus, it only secures a firmer hold on him. We're talking about the anchor and being anchored to Jesus. I want to tell you a story. Years ago, as we did most years, we took our kids to Disney World in Orlando. Some of you are getting ready to go here in a few weeks. 
One day we took them to one of the uh, water parks, Typhoon Lagoon. Morgan must have been about three or four. And Jordan, a couple years older than her, so I took Jordan and we went on some of the uh, rides and the things that you can do in the water park. And Morgan and Claire were just there uh, by the wave pool. Everybody know what the wave pool is? It's this large body of water within cement walls and cement floor. And the wave pool is calm, but every so often an alarm will go off. And when that alarm goes off, the wave pool starts generating waves. And they get bigger and bigger. So Morgan is just kind of playing as a three, four-year-old would do in the water and splashing around right there on the, on the very shore, if you will, of where Claire was. And she was fine until that alarm went off. Burn, 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 burn. And those waves started billowing. And she looked frantic. She was freaking out. And she looked at her mama, and her mama knew that she was scared, so she said, come here, Morgan. And Morgan would have nothing to do with her or, or anyone else. She started screaming, I want my daddy. I want my daddy. And the more the waves got bigger and bigger, the louder her voice got, I want my daddy. Oh. And Cla Claire could not comfort her. She couldn't console her. She just screaming louder and louder, I want my daddy. So Jordan and I were a little uh, far off, but I heard, I heard, because a father hears the voice of their children crying. I heard, so when I heard, I put my cape on, here I come to save the day. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. <laughs> I come running, and I snatched her up, and she squeezed me tight and held on, and I, I, I walked out of the little... Uh, shallow water of the wave pool and we sat down and after a while she calmed down and she was consoled and comforted and she was fine but in that moment when those waves were crashing in to the cement shore if you will she was screaming and she would have nothing else but to have her daddy come rescue her take her in his arms and console her and I want to say to you this morning, if you're going through a storm and the waves are starting to get larger and they're sounding much more fierce and the wind's blowing, you can be like that little girl, that three or four year old little girl that says nothing else is going to do. All I want is my daddy. I want Father God, Abba Father, to come sweep me up in his arms and say it's going to be okay. I got you. And that's the anchor that we're talking about that we have in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen this morning? The ship that is anchored is sensitive to every change of wind or tide. And every time the wind or tide changes, the ship changes with it to meet the force of the storm. So in other words, you have your anchor tied at the bow of the boat, the front of the boat, and the wind's blowing, but that anchor is locked into the sand or the mud, and it's not going anywhere, and you're tethered to that anchor, and even though the wind blows hard and the waves are, are getting larger, you have a hope that is in Christ Jesus, the anchor, the steadfast and steady certainty of the promise that we have in him. So what kind of anchor are you dropping this morning? <laughs> what kind of anchor are you dropping? So I want, you to, I want you to kind of think about this. If you're not dropping the anchor of Jesus, then you're dropping some other thing. Is the anchor that you're dropping, can you trust it? For some people, is the anchor alcohol? When storms come and, and life's not going the way you want it and everything's uncertain, do you go to the bottle? Only to discover that that thing's not going to hold. And every time I do it, it's just the same deja vu the next time I go or the next day I go. And it's not solving any of my issues. It's just causing more pain and more discomfort and more storms in my life. Is your anchor, dr anchor drug of choice? Same thing. Same song, same verse. Is your anchor relationships? Is your anchor friendships? Is your anchor money? Is your anchor your career? Well, what happens if that moves? 
The immovable, unchangeable that we read in the book of Hebrews is the anchor that we find in Christ Jesus. That's our hope. And we can be assured that that thing is not going to move. It's going to dig in deeper when storms come. And we can be assured that the certainty is found in Jesus Christ. John, would you come? I'm going to end. I'm not through with my notes, but I'm going to stop. There's a story that t- uh, Tony Campalo very uh, familiar author, sociologist, professor, pastor, motivational speaker. He's done it all. He's, he's in his late 80s now. But years ago, he, he wrote a book, and he shared a story in this book about when he was living, a little, living in New York City. And he was in grade school, and every day the, the nanny would walk with him to school. It was about eight blocks from where he lived to his school. So... For, for many years, I'm sure, the nanny would walk with him to school. One day, when he got to a certain age, Tony went to his mom and said, Look, uh, it's going to save you a lot of money. You don't have to pay the nanny to walk with me. I think I can do this by myself. I don't need any help. Any of you guys been there before? I ain't talking about walking to school. I'm talking, I'm talking about saying I don't need any help. So his mama said, Okay, well, we'll, we'll try it. Okay, so... She sent Tony on his way. And every day, Tony would go those eight blocks, every block, look both ways, make sure nothing's coming, and check out his surroundings as his mom would tell him, and he would continue on to school every day. And he did that from that point on until he got older. And then years passed at a family gathering. Tony is sharing that story with all his family members. His mom's there, too, listening. And he was almost bragging, like, yeah, back when I was in second, third grade, I walked eight blocks by myself to school. You know, I was a big boy. Then after he told the story, and he he, kind of left the little group, and his mom came to him, he says, Tony, you didn't know this, but for those first few years that you were walking by yourself to school in New York City, eight blocks away from home, I walked with you every time I was behind you and I would hide behind corners and I would just make sure that you got to school every day you didn't know that but I was watching you and making sure that you're going to be safe and I I was reminded that's just like God sometimes we say well God where are you in the storm I'm, I'm by myself And then we'll realize the more storms we're in, the more uncertainty of life. If we we tether ourselves, if we tie ourselves to that anchor, there'll be times when we say, where are you, God? And God is like that mother. You may not be able to see him at times. Sometimes you won't even feel his presence. But you know what? He's there. He's watching. Ah, they can take that. They'll be good. They're not going to die. My mom used to say, go ahead and do that. ain't going to kill you. They'll be okay, because I know when they come out of this, they're going to be a much better person, stronger. They'll be a, have learned something. They'll have more knowledge. They'll, they'll know that they can trust me on the next time around when storms come in. But we as humans, it's almost our innate nature. When we have no evidence of, of, of God around. And we're starting to freak out. Where is he? Where, where, where is he? I'm right. I'm, my ship is about to go down. I'm right here in this storm. And I, 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 don't, I don't know where he is. He's right there watching you, over you. As long as you're anchored to Jesus, you can rest assured. That he's going to be with you through every storm, through every trial, through every hardship, through every sorrow, through every hopeless night, through every sleepless night, through every encounter that life presents to us. We have an anchor. We have a hope in that anchor that's steadfast and true. Would you stand with me this morning? In just a moment, 
we're going to dismiss you. And as we kind of get into that flow, in just a moment, I'm going to ask the prayer team to come and stand. And those of you that are here and you say, yeah, I've been going through a storm. I'm in it right now. And I just don't know what to do. Or I just don't know how I'm going to make it out of this storm. Even though I know the answer, Pastor Clint, you've given us the answer. The anchor is in Jesus, and he's the one that we look to. But yet, I still find myself in a storm, and I just need... I need help. I need prayer. I need someone to stand with me. I need someone to, to walk with me through this. Paul told the 276 people that were on that ship as we read in the book of Acts. He said, look, nobody's going to die here. Stop freaking out. We're all going to make it. But there were some things that they did in order to get to the success of all of them surviving the storm. So you may be here and say, I just, I just want someone to pray with me. We're not, here to, we're not here to judge. We're not here to condemn. We're not here to, to spend any time with you other than to stand with you and pray and believe God's best for your life as you are encountering a storm. I want you to bow your heads with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. For every person that's in this place. God, I'm sure every single person here has encountered multiple storms in their life. I'm sure there's some here today that are right in the middle of a storm. And they're needing to drop anchor. They're needing to allow Jesus to be that holding strength in their lives. They're needed to be reminded and they're needing someone to stand in prayer with them that these waves will subside. These winds will stop blowing. But you put your faith in Jesus, your hope in Jesus now as he guides you through. And there's everyone in this room at one time or another after this day we'll encounter a storm to whatever measure help us to be reminded that you're the anchor you're our hope and I pray for every person God I pray for those that may be here a guest or maybe someone that attends Life Fellowship on a regular basis they, they need to get right with you they're not living the way that you have directed them to through your word or commanded them to live through your word. They're just not living right, God. And I just pray that today that you'd speak to their heart by your Holy Spirit. And you'd cause them to take a step toward you. Make things right with you. Maybe the reason they're in the storm of life is because they're not living the way that you've intended for them to live. And if they'll start walking toward you, they'll start walking out of that storm. So I pray for people that need Jesus today. They need to, they need to experience a salvation like none other. And experience forgiveness, cleansing, and wholeness that they can find in Jesus. I pray for all those, God, that would be candidates for this prayer. We thank you, God, for our time together. Let your word... Just find a place in our hearts that sustains us, that brings us comfort, that brings us assurance and certainty that no matter what we face in life, you're like that mother that is watching over that child as he walks from block to block. God, you watch over us, protecting us and assuring us that we can make it because our anchor is in Jesus. We ask you these things in Jesus' name we pray.